Yeah, Pete Sessions, S-E-S-S-I-O-N-S, -S -S Texas 17, Republican. Do? You, no, look at me. Look at you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're having a conversation. Right. Um, so, um, how have things been going so far in the campaign? The uh, extension uh, by some 45 days to July the 14th uh, has meant that we've had limited opportunity to be with groups of people and with people. The COVID-19 uh, battle is is taking its toll on our country, on our economy, and people are prepared to break out and go live their life. But the facts of the case are there are parts in this district, including Brazos County uh, and other areas that are in, in transit and out of transit areas that are not faring so well. And so it has put a, a crimp on the ability that we have to go do public events. And um, being that the uh, you're in the home home stretch uh, of this campaign, um, how, how do you feel that the uh, the campaign is going for you yeah. right now? The last 60 days of this campaign are going to focus on really the qualifications of the I think of myself, uh, my experience, my ability to get things done, my ability to go to Washington at a time when Washington needs leadership, not just a vote, and I believe that the people uh, here in McLennan County and across the region have responded well. Uh, incredible numbers of business groups, the realtors, the home builders, the National Rifle Association, among others, look to me to go to Washington to fight the battle on behalf of the free enterprise system. That's why they've endorsed me. Uh, business groups all over this district understand that going with 22 years worth of seniority puts me at the top of the Republican uh, pile, at, so to speak, uh, uh, whether we're in the majority or the minority of making decisions in the Financial Services Committee, which is where the debate is going to be on Treasury, Small Business Administration, and that pile or heap that I refer to is, is this organization, Financial Services, that will be the key committee this next year as we fare, fared out how this process works, whether people uh, have to pay money back, uh, whether there are attacks by an administration upon people about how they use money. Uh, we need to worry about the farmers and ranchers. We need to worry about small business and I will be an advocate for them at a time when they need a real leader and that's how I think things are going. People look, are looking to me, my leadership and my experience level to be prepared next year to walk in day one, ready to go. We're, we're coming up on what should have been the runoff election. Um, how do you feel you'll be able to use that extra time now that's been pushed to June, July? In fact, there has been extra time. Uh, we won 32% of the vote. There were 12 people on the ballot. Uh, and to get 32%, uh, I think speaks volumes to not only my, my service when I've represented uh, huge parts of this district in the past. Uh, people are looking for experience, they're looking for someone who is knowledgeable, can hit the ground running and know what they're doing day one. And I think that, that as we took that huge lead that we had in the primary, the first, run the first election to the runoff, I believe people are still looking for us to now focus uh, on the things that are important about uh, the problems of COVID, the problems of economics, the problems of free enterprise, and the problems of, of a government uh, controlled by Nancy Pelosi through the House of Representatives that will bankrupt this country unless we replace her, and that, that's another strong content I have. Uh, I was chairman of the National Republican Congressional Committee when we last won the majority, net 63 seats. We've got to win back the majority and replace Nancy Pelosi as speaker. When you started your campaign, COVID-19 wasn't really something on people's minds, uh, if it was a thing at all. Um, how has your campaign evolved through the course of now we've gone into a quarantine and stuff like that? The opportunity to see COVID-19 for what it is as a very dangerous virus and menace uh, against 
uh, not just people, but against institutions, against the country, and against the world, uh, has taken on new uh, geometric proportions. And our economy, our way of life, has been impacted directly as a result of COVID-19. So this is where it will take a lot of creative thinking about how do we respond next year to be prepared for what will be a new round of economic news, of f bank failures, of failures of the free enterprise system and how we're gonna bring us back. I believe our free enterprise system is going to win. I believe the American people are prepared to come back to work, are prepared to not only accept the responsibility but to bring their lives back. But in that process, we have schools, that are going to have to be looked at. We have circumstances, free enterprise system, huge companies, small companies that are gonna have to be adaptive. And that will take positive, proactive leadership. Adding another $3 trillion worth of debt will simply make it harder to come back. And so we're focusing on what's happening now and also what happens in January when I go to Washington to make sure that what we do then is not re-attack ourself, but help the free enterprise system to make the recovery. Everybody's been affected by the virus, not necessarily because they've contracted it, but because it's affected their job, their work, uh, how they do their normal things. Um, what, what kind of uh, reaction do you have to stuff like that? Well, my reaction comes directly from the medical community that I'm very close to, including my son, who is a physician on the front lines of this. And uh, he has told me and other professionals have told us very directly, this is not wave one, two, or three. This is the wave, and it's going to go across the whole country. It's going to attack communities. We need every single person to take the precaution to wear their mask, to social uh, distancing and to clean their hands. Uh, this is not a virus that we might want to get to get over. This is something we know very little about at this point, whether it comes back, the organs that it attacks, and I will tell you this is a very dangerous challenge to not just the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, but also the National Institute of Health, which I know very well. And I know Dr. Fauci well, I know Dr. Collins well, and they are seeing that this is a different kind of virus that we have really never seen before and we must turn the corner because it is so easily contracted and passed on. And that's why we've got to make sure that the research that we do to find the answer and the protocols that will, that will allow us in areas like Waco, Texas and Bryan and out in Mahia and Limestone County for first responders to identify it and do things early on. I'm, I'm confident we're gonna do that.